tomorrow we have to go back to work. Yeah. Well, you do. I'm quitting. Huh. Are you? I guess so. I guess technically I have to go back in, but I have to go in for five minutes. Or I was trying to change the oil on a piece of machinery. And it was so packed with chicken shit. I put my hand up in there and I'm like, oh. What about you? What is the worst job you've ever done? So United I States Navy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like that. The job is to taste and analyze pet food. Why? Why wouldn't they just give it to a dog or something? Be like, does it gag or not? It's perfect. This is, it doesn't. <laughs> Are mediocre. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Here we go again. Good job. Good job. I wish you were wearing your dress again. No. You know what? It didn't even phase me to wear that dress. It wasn't even no, that. it phased me. I bet you were hard Woo! the whole time, yeah. <laughs> it's a good look. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back again. This is yeah. Caleb. You bye. I'm here with my best friends, Jeremy, Brandon. Hi. How are you guys doing today? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I'm doing great. Jeremy? It's yeah. a little warm today, but... Yes, it is. These flies... Felt good getting a little uh, breeze into the, the studio here today. Yeah. I can't wait for the cold to come off. Oh, she got flies all return to the pits of hell. Yeah, dude, when, when insects die, yeah, that's my favorite. Yep. Abs absolute favorite. I, I thought you were about to start beatboxing. <laughs> boots, 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 and <laughs> boots and pants and boots and pants and boots and pants. So today, today. which this is going to come out after we are already back to work, but... Tomorrow, we have to go back to work. Yeah. Well, you do. I'm quitting. Uh, are you? I guess so. I guess technically I have to go back in, but I have to go in for five minutes or so and say, fuck you. Fuck you. You're cool. Fuck you. I'm out. You, you're you quitting tomorrow? Yeah, why didn't, why didn't you talk to me about this first? I don't know. I would have totally quit with you, but now I don't have enough time to like prep that. You, all you got to do is prep a speech. That's probably like three sentences. Fuck Not you. Three sentences, you. three words. Fuck you. You're cool. Fuck you. I'm out. Can I steal yours? Yeah. We should actually go in there and sync up and we'll say it at the same time, point at the same people. And, and then just dip. Hmm. And then as we're as we're walking out the door, we'll open the door, we'll look back, we'll say, we'll come back for our toolboxes later. <laughs> <laughs> that leads us right into our topic for tonight. Okay. Which is Jobs. Jobs. Work. Work. Bullshit. Yeah. Bullshit jobs and bullshit work for overtime hours and bullshit pay. Mm-hmm. Well, Oliver Anthony said it best. So. That's a great song, first of all. It is he, a great song. He nailed it on that. It song. is a great song. So, and, and with that, I, w I would like to s bring up the point, right, that there's so many jobs out there that people don't even understand are fucking jobs. They just ex expect like life to happen mm -hmm. without realizing that there was somebody that had to make, build, fix, continue to fix in order for them to live their, their cush lifestyle. You know, like for instance, target, how many go to target every fucking day and spend thousands of dollars and they walk in one day and go, oh, shit, they remodeled, they changed. But they don't realize there was 80 fucking people involved in a five-month fucking overhaul. Yeah. And they slaved day in and day out. Or they slaved at night because they were closed and there was some Karen that was going to bitch about a fucking construction worker in aisle seven yeah. during the daytime. So they had to work overnight hours when nobody was there to get the job done. So that rolls us into it. There's so many bullshit jobs out there. Yeah. There's also really good jobs. I want to start with, Jeremy, what is your job? What do you do for a living? Other I, than sit there and push buttons. Yeah, I just recently got hired pushing buttons. <laughs> but <laughs> I... 
climb them wind turbines. You know, I don't know, some of you listening might not uh, have them around, but here in Iowa, we have a shit ton of them. A shit ton. And so, yeah, uh, I climb wind turbines and uh, fix them. Clean energy. Get some, uh, energy, get some ACs running for you during these hot days. Yeah, clean energy. Jeremy makes sure that there's clean energy around the world. Yep. Green. Green energy. Green energy. Ish. Ish. Yeah. I mean, except for when, <laughs> except for, we get down to the details. Yeah. It's green. Except for, <laughs> except for when gearboxes blow up and they contaminate a whole cornfield with 80 gallons of gear oil. Well, it's usually contained inside. Well, that's what we say in the report. No, so that, it's contained. <laughs> I'm trying to keep a job. Yeah. We're not, yeah. We're not talking about it. <laughs> Brandon, yeah. What do you do for ger- for germs? For germs? germs? What do you do for germs? What I do you do, do for, for germs? Uh, I am a mechanic, heavy equipment mechanic, heavy equipment mechanic. Yeah, if you want to call it that. Sometimes it's not always heavy equipment, but yeah, sometimes it's bullshit little equipment, little, little stupid things that Doesn't shouldn't matter. be my job, right? Yeah, not my job, bro. Not my job. <laughs> <laughs> so now that we know what you two do, what do you do? I am Brandon's boss. He is not my boss. <laughs> <laughs> I am also a heavy construction equipment technician. Uh, we fix diesel engine driven, gas engine driven yeah. equipment for building construction, any kind, any kind of stuff. Yeah. We, rental. Some things don't even have an engine. Some things are just electric. All electric. Fuck, that's such bullshit, man. Fuck electric and electric and cars yeah. and... Yeah. Fuck all that shit. Yeah. Anyway. So we have those blue collar jobs is what you would call it. Yeah. We're blue collar boys. Start to finish. Go to work. Slave away. Make a paycheck. Bitch about uh, everyone that sells insurance and, you know. It's, it's an office or. It's an office. Or worse yet, which I can't because my wife does this, but. Work, it works at home. Works at home. You know, so Jaden was talking about this last night, actually. Uh, she was having a conversation with one of her friends and uh, she was talking about a time where I looked at Jaden because we're at her office is set up like in our living room and we had it. We we're having a conversation one day and I go, I can't fucking believe that they pay you as much money as they do to sit at that computer at home. Right. And the way I said it, like sound like a dick, it took away what all the does. importance of yeah. what she does. And I didn't really realize it at the time because that's not how I meant it. How I meant it was like, you know, when you le- when you think about what we do, mm-hmm. when you climb a fucking tower and you got to lay under a gearbox or you got to fucking take fan blades off or put them on or when we got to fucking crawl into a fucking scuttle hole to fix a piece of machinery. The way it came out was, you know, your job is is pointless and meaningless. But when you t- when you talk about like guys like us that that – or or a physical labor type job, right? Yeah. You know how much work and effort goes into what we do. So I was coming from the perspective of like a blue collar worker where it's like, I physically have to fuck my body up to get a job done. So I was aiming it as like, I can't believe you can make that much money and you get to sit in our living room and do it. And that's how I meant it. Not, not like, your job, your job is is yeah, not important, yeah. important, and you make a fuckload of money. Which and, isn't it funny because they both of our wives work from home and they make more than both of us, <laughs> right? <laughs> that's right. Isn't it? But that's like what, like when I was in the Navy, they used to say, you know, people complain about their job and stuff. You'd be like, well, yeah. choose your rate, choose your fate, because your rate's your job, whatever. Yeah, it's the same fucking thing. Like we chose this essentially, you, you know. Kind of. And and I kind of feel like it's at any point in life, I think you get so wrapped up into I need this paycheck to cover my bills Mm -hmm. and you know what you need and you know how much you make and you just kind of assume that you can't leave that career path because that's what you know now and that's what you're good at pretty much so you're you're always in this realm of you can't take a risk and try to do something you want to do yeah but in reality most of the time if you try you probably can fucking do something easier for more Mm -hmm. you just have to do it so anyway with that being said we are going to talk about jobs and work and and a, f- and a few in and outs with 
those categories. With those categories. So what I wanted to start with was let everybody know what it is we do for a living because we're not full-time podcasters. We, uh, you know, you guys don't think we're cool enough for that yeah. yet. So We do this for fun with the aspirations of doing it as a job. <laughs> um, it, that's exactly what it is. Hopefully one day we can do this full-time and you guys love listening to us. But yeah. I wanted to... Guy first. Yeah, you know, get me off here and maybe you can really have a shot. Uh, I wanted to go through a few uh, jobs that m most people don't really think of, but they're labeled as like the worst jobs in the world. Okay. I wanted to, which this one fucked me up because I don't think this is a bad job, a truck driver. Oh, they it's, make a, quite a good, well, I could see why it would be considered. A bad job because a lot of them are over the road and you're gone over the, the road time. you're gone a lot but that's just a blue collar job mm -hmm. and then the next one a soldier yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> that is a bad job yeah being a being a soldier you should be an airman or a fucking seaman like brandon um i was a seaman or i mean i was an airman but so one job i wanted to talk about that most people don't really understand is like a miner like a coal miner mm. I was going to say, I was a minor once. No. Yeah. When you were 17. Mm -hmm. And younger. For so, 17 years, I was a minor. <laughs> <laughs> so being a minor, I don't think people understand, right? Because we're in this new age, right, Jeremy, where people are like, go green, clean electricity, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But what they don't understand, the power plant that provides backup energy, what does that run off of? Yeah. A lot of it's going to run off coal. <laughs> there it is yeah. i mean coal, it's still very natural gas in, uh, in the world today it's mm -hmm. you can't get away from clean energy now in iowa people think that you getting like, away from or you can't get away from yeah fossil fuels a lot of people in iowa think because we have so many wind towers and solar panels out there mm. that our world's just clean and whatever no there's people that have to go underground, miles underground, and they have to bust out coal, and they have to ship that shit back to the surface, and they do it all day long. And 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 people don't realize how shitty that is. Well, yeah, and it's not to mention, like, the batteries that go on electric cars, those the fucking mining for all those yes. batteries, that's not good either. There, <clears throat> I, I listened to a podcast one time about this lady who, I don't remember what she did, but she lived in uh, South America somewhere. And it used to be like green and full of green and life and shit, and trees and plants, yeah. and then but the, it's a uh, it's got a uh, was it lithium, yep. lithium mines or whatever, yep. and they're fucking just destroying the place to get fucking. They dig the, the giant fucking holes for fucking car batteries, basically like electric, and electric batteries. And in some of those places, right? I watched one like uh, podcast that was similar to what you were talking about, but it was in like Ukraine or something. It, it in those areas, these there's not enough regulation, and these mm -hmm. people are trying to sell it themselves. So they go down in these mines, and while these guys are running backhoes and bulldozers and and giant excavators, they'll scoop a pile of dirt and they'll drop it, and then these people run in right between the fucking the hoe arm and the bucket, and they start digging in these piles to find these precious metals that everyone's looking for, and. There's so many people that die in accidents in those mines because there's no regulations, and it's all for the electric batteries. Yeah. There's a lot of people that are still mining, even though you think that this, this world's going green. It's not. We're it's always going to depend on fossil fuels, and that's a fucking... If you, if you know a miner, or if you run in or meet a miner, shake their hand, because that job is fucking brutal. And they don't pay well enough to do it. Yeah. As in coal miner. Coal, coal miner. Yeah. Stay away from. Stay away from the actual then. miners. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Another one on the list, a slaughterhouse worker. Mm. I could see that being shitty. So I have a lot of respect for slaughterhouse workers. Absolutely. I mean, they. Well, our they moms, yeah. our moms I mean, both work for Smithfield. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and. So I was involved with the building of a new packing plant at one point a few years ago. And 
they're they're getting to a point now where like they're the way that they kill the animals is a lot more humane than it used to be. But there is people where their only job all day long was to, as a cow walked in, they slit his throat. Mm-hmm. That was their job. There was the kill floor, and then there was the the there was another floor. They'd move from that floor to the next floor, and there's people. Their only job is to gut the animal and. Well, yeah, and that's all they did all day long. Now, when you kill that many living creatures as a job every day, that fucks with people. No, yeah. And now I love meat, right? I am I'm a fucking steak, hamburger, pork chop. That's that's my that's my jam. And oh I, yeah, and you guys are the same boat, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. I don't. I know that that's the way of life, and that. We raise animals to use them for food. But you don't think about the guy that's got to kill them every day. Yeah. And, and taking, you know, even as a hunter, taking the life of something, it's it's not a fucking easy thing to do. Mm-hmm. And if that's your job, holy fuck. Well, yeah, and seeing it that much. And do, doing it that, that Daily. much. Every day you come in. And so I was told that there used to be a thing where in a slaughterhouse, the kill floor, they rotated people. So, like, it was either hourly or by the day. Mm-hmm. You'd be on the kill floor one day, and your job for the day was to kill animals, and then they rotated you out. And then you'd have time off of being on the kill floor because they didn't want you getting fucked up, fucked up from right. killing animals every fucking day, you know? Yeah, yeah. What, what's the worst job you've ever had? Worst job I've ever had. Honestly, I will say I've been I've been pretty lucky. I haven't really had any jobs that were like super shitty. Right. Um our current position now, I will say is probably where I've had the worst experiences. Experience as far as a shitty job. Yeah. And and it you know, we had equipment that was on a chicken farm. Yeah. An, an active chicken farm. And one of the pieces of machinery broke down underneath the chicken barn. And the way that the barns were designed, the chickens would shit and they would fall through the cages and fall through the floor and then go to the bottom side of the barn. Well, they were using our equipment to scoop up all the shit in the bottom of the barn and haul it out. Well, this machine broke down and it was under the barn and it was probably shin deep, fresh, wet, chicken shit Mm. and I had to kneel down in it and I had to pull apart this machine that was also just chicken shit everywhere. I mean, it was everything in there was chicken shit and feathers and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And, and I, uh, that's probably the worst job I've ever had to do was be underneath those. Cause as you're working on it, chickens are shitting on you. Yeah. You're getting shit on <laughs> while you're doing your job. I'd be like, nope. And pull the shit out. I mean, between the smell and the flies and the, the maggots. I mean, remember that one where I was like, yeah. I was like, I need you to crawl under here because as soon as I put my hand in it you're, and I feel bleh. that wet chicken shit, I was puking. Yeah. I was trying to change the oil on a piece of machinery. And it was so packed with chicken shit. I put my hand up in there and I'm like, oh. Yeah, and I'm like Brandon. I need you to get under there and dig it out. (laughs) I need you to do it. He did. He came and did it. Yeah, yeah. That was. What about you? Was the worst job you've ever done? Uh, United States Navy. (laughs) (laughs) No, I like that. Yeah, I I did too. The military was great. Uh, there. So there's there's two jobs that I'd say that I've done that I didn't really care for. One of them was when I worked at Honeywell Aerospace. Mm-hmm. And I was, and it wasn't a bad job. Like it was, wasn't hard really. It was just tedious and boring and it just indoors. I don't like working indoors cause I like having natural light and whatever. Yep. And, uh, and so that just kind of bugged me cause, cause it was boring as fuck. Yeah. And then the second one was when I was a conductor for the railroad. Yeah. And that sucked because mainly because I was just gone. Like you'd. They'd call you, you'd go, you got two hours or whatever it was to get there. You'd go and you'd go somewhere and then you'd stay the night somewhere and then you'd get up and you'd do it again. You'd come back and then you 
get home, you go to sleep, and they call you. It's just gone a lot, you know, and that's one yeah. of the main reasons why I got out of the Navy was because, uh, you know, because I had kids, or I yeah. had a kid at the time, and I just didn't want to be gone all the time. Gone, yeah. And so that was, like, the thing. Yeah. What's you? What about you, Jeremy? The shittiest job you ever had? Mine was probably working at one of those packing plants in my hometown. Yeah. And but it wasn't as like actually working at the packing plant. I was hired another contractor to paint like the pipes in that. So they'd shut down a section and all the pipes that because it's always cold in there. Yep. And so all the condensation and stuff from the pipes, they would always rust them out or like the paint would start peeling off of them. Yep. And you would have to go up on these scissor lifts and sit there with a needle gun and just fucking Mm -hmm. Yeah, like chipping out all the paint mm -hmm. and stuff like that, and I thought I was making great money at the time. I was, I think I was a freshman in high school when I was doing it for a whole summer, and it was like eight bucks an hour. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it was fucking miserable. You're cool yeah. in there, yep. and then you're dressed up in all this shit. Then you start sweating, and then you get all this shit all over you and mm -hmm. stinks, and yeah, so that was miserable. Yeah, yeah. C circling back to the, the packing plants real quick, I had to go fix a machine in, in one of the packing plants locally here. And the machine broke down in this room where it was a hog, it was a hog facility. So they butchered hogs. And it broke down in the section of this building where they were packing pig heads mm. into boxes. And and one of the guys was was standing there and he was doing his job. And I walked over to him and go, I'm just curious, but what? Why are they putting the head of the pig in a box? He goes, they sell them to Tokyo, they go to Japan. It's a deli. They eat pig head, all the parts of a pig head. They eat it over in Japan. Yeah, I've seen that before. On like yeah, like they storefronts. You you go there and they have the pig head in pig head in the like display case. Yeah, mm. they, that's I don't weird. know why you must eat like cheeks and brain and tongue and eyeballs. Yeah. And See, I I wouldn't even want to do the pig's feet. You know, no. Even that Pickled fucking pig feet. Even that tripe, uh, tri like tripe, beef tripe. Yeah. Even that like looks gross as fuck to me, dude. So I, I can't imagine trying to do like a pig head or something. You know, <laughs> gross as fuck. <laughs> you, in the amount of heads that were going through this conveyor line, I mean, it was every every foot and a half there was a pig head, and the conveyor never stopped the whole time I was in there. Mm -hmm. They were just picking them up, put them in a box, a box, and going another. And it, I'm like. Yeah. There's that many people that want to eat the shit that's in that pig head. Yeah. Fucking crazy. Yeah. That was nuts. Okay, so I'm going to come back here. Did you know that there's a job that's called a pet food taster? Oh, really? The job is to taste and analyze pet food. Why? <laughs> Good question. Then you want me to read about it real quick? Why wouldn't they just give it to a dog or something? Be like, does it gag or not? It's perfect. Says it, it doesn't. <laughs> Although some people actually enjoy eating pet or eating pet food for a living, it's it's fair to say that most of us are repulsed by it. This job involves eating really bad batches of animal products and comes with the risk of severe food poisoning. To be successful in this role, you will need a highly developed palate. <laughs> <laughs> A presence of mind not to swallow anything but your pride. So most pet food is like rendered down products from like a kill floor that like they take the intestines of an animal. Yeah. And they send them through a rendering plant and then they burn it down into like a fucking product and they make pet food. But apparently... To make sure the quality is good enough for your pet, there is a human that tastes it first. That's ridiculous. You couldn't pay me enough. Although, I would say that it's not as bad if it's the dry food, but which is still bad. But if you once like, you start getting to that wet like, shit, the, like the fucking cat food in a tin, yeah, because like I've literally opened those before. All right, and like the the food itself looks disgusting, but then but then there's like that fucking film of jelly fucking. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta do that fucking challenge with yeah. the fish. Dude, dude. we have a cat and we it's dry food oh my gosh and we keep it in a big tub or whatever right yeah. next to his bowl but i hold my i feed him in the morning right away 
I hold my breath every fucking time I open that container because it smells so goddamn bad. Right? The dry food? Yeah, the dry food. Yeah. Right? I it's, don't mind the smell of like dry animal food. I don't think it's that bad. I don't know. <sighs> Is it just like a you thing? Like it might be just a me thing, but it's it, a you like, thing. I hold my breath. It's fucking. It's rough. That's crazy. The the dry food I can handle the dry food. Yeah. Like I could probably eat. A couple kibbles of the dry food and Actually, be fine. I'm pretty sure I've done it when I was a kid before. Like, what does dog food taste like? Right. And it wasn't like terrible. It's just a bunch but of the sh- wet shit. I ain't, I ain't, you don't fucking, I ain't playing with that fucking yeah. shit. That's just gross. <laughs> <laughs> what you got? Okay. So before I, before I throw up, because you keep telling me about gross shit, <laughs> the next job on this fucking ridiculously fucked up jobs that I want to talk about is. An animal masturbator. Uh, is this for like, yeah, for get, like insemination and shit this like that? This is for like artificial insemination mm-hmm. and and production of like cattle and horse and, and breeding for livestock. That's mm-hmm. less crazy to me than the food, mm-hmm. the pet food taste. Right? Yeah, so, I feel like I could go a long way in that career. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I bet I, you could. I just want to say, Jeremy, I don't think you actually have to masturbate them. You just have to <laughs> hold the sock that they masturbate into. Oh, but he's going to go full mind. He's be like, I take my job very, <laughs> very seriously. Jeremy, Jeremy, it is impressive. Your numbers are through the roof. It's amazing how fast you turn these animals out. <laughs> Jeremy, in your first six months, you set a record for the most bulls jerked off. <laughs> yeah, I got it down. Yeah. So if anybody wants to reach out to me. I think you're going to be doing down. the reach-ins. Yeah. You're the one doing the reach-in, absolutely. But again, this is one of those jobs that people don't actually think about yeah. as okay. being a thing. Yeah. You know, and... and when it comes to livestock, right? These farmers, they want the best genetics so that their animals produce the most amount of, you know, beef mm-hmm. or pork per animal, and that's and that's how they do it by genetics. They they breed for genetics. Now, when you sit and you buy your fucking bone and pork chops you're eating on a Thursday night, you don't think about some guy had to hold on to a fucking pig cock with a sleeve in order to get them fucking little baby pigs grown up with enough meat on them that your pork chops come out fucking the size of a dinner plate. But somebody does. Somebody has to do it. Well, then people also don't think about uh, the hot dogs they're enjoying, where those are coming from. Ooh, the hot the hot dogs are... Which I don't like hot dogs, so I'm good. I, I tell you what, I really do like fucking hot dogs and chili dogs. I just, you can't think about how they're produced and where they come from because it, it'll fuck you up a little bit thinking about Honestly, it. that's a lot of the food that we eat. Now. Chicken nuggets? Moving away from, well, it's not really moving away from. It could be food if you're the right kind of individual. I wanted to ask you, uh-huh. both of you, do you think, so this next job I'm about to say, do you think... After I say it, you would be able to do this job. Crime scene cleaner. Yeah. You think, I've, you think you could do it? Yeah, there was actually a, a point of time where I was actually look when I was looking at jobs and stuff like I, that came across as a, a job to apply for, and I thought about doing it. A crime scene cleaner. I could do it. Yeah, I could definitely do it because you think so. The bodies already got all the bodies are gone. Yeah, like. Everything's everything's gone. You're cleaning uh, blood. Plus, they yeah, it's, usually they wear hazmat the, suits and shit. Yeah, you don't get the whole story behind it. Yeah, so. yeah, but can you imagine? Can you imagine the smell? Because there's some of these where like people have been dead for a, an amount of time, and they start to decompose. And you're not cleaning up just blood. You're cleaning up like bodily fluids. Well, like I said, there's from a, decomposition. Like I said, decomposition. <laughs> <laughs> spell that one. <laughs> decomposition. Can't spell it because it's not real. That's uh, a real word. Yeah. So anyway, like I said, they be, they go in there with like hazmat suits and they yeah. have respirators and shit. So generally, you're not gonna. I mean, you'll probably get a little bit, but you're. It's not like you're <clears throat> just going in there with your your 
nose to the air and smelling the fucking fecal matter and all that shit. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I would be down for that job. I mean, if I, if somebody asked me to do it once, I could probably do it once and be like, it is what it is. But I think if that was like every day, it would be hard to wake up every morning and go, got to go clean up another mess. I don't know if I could do it every day. See, I don't think you're getting the like the decomposed every day. So, yeah. like I feel like You're probably right. I feel like those are the bad days at that job. Like, mm-hmm. oh, I bet you're right. Go, decompose this fucker's going to smell. I bet yeah. a lot of times it's just it's just blood. Yeah. It's probably just like a bunch of blood and carpet and yeah. shit like that. I bet. You know, I'll go, I got Okay. Honestly, like maybe maybe I could do it more than I thought, but I could definitely do it, but I I will say this, they don't pay very well, so I oh, wouldn't know. No, no. I, there's and that's that's what we're trying to like expose here tonight is some of these jobs that people are like I would never fucking do that. There's people that do it, and they're doing it for so much less money than you probably make listening to our podcast. Mm. You know, the the some of these jobs that are shitty aren't making a lot of money. They're just people that are. That's what they're doing. Yeah, that is what's paying their bills. Fuck, I would not do it. I wouldn't do it. Like, it reminds me of the time, I don't know if you were here for this, but there was an individual that had to help the fire department in Clear Lake one time. There was a, a gentleman who passed away in his apartment. He was like the second or third story apartment. Mm-hmm. And he was well, well, well over six, 700 pounds. Yeah. And he passed away in his apartment building. And they found him because some of the other tenants started calling and saying, hey, there's a stink coming from somewhere. So they found him. The only way they could get him out was through the, they, they, there was like a double window. And they cut the window out and they put like a big body sack under him. <laughs> and they, body sack. they used a telehandler. <laughs> And they reached up and hooked it up to the telehandler yeah. and they pulled him out the window and like brought him down. And it was like apparently leaking fluids while uh, they were bringing it down. And yeah. And like that would be gross. That right. Be, <laughs> all right. That would be probably over the line. For that me. would be like leaking that, fluids underneath because then you got to clean that shit up too. That would be yeah. the day that I quit that job. <laughs> I, I, would, I would walk in and be like, uh, no, Bob, I'm not nope. doing this. No. Nope. Mm mm. <laughs> I had myself a healthy breakfast, and I'm not fucking t- about to let it go. I'll take this <laughs> job and shove it. And shove it. I ain't working here no more. Mm-hmm. Fuck that. Uh, okay, so I'm going to keep going with this list. I'm only going to do a couple more from this list because I have okay. broadcasters on it. What? Yeah. I don't know if I trust this list. Queensguard. Hmm. That would be a shitty job. That'd be so, boring. I can see how that one would be shitty because people come and fuck with you all the time. Yeah. And you just want to like give them a little fucking shot with your gun. Yeah. Right into the chin. And, but you can't. Well, that or, I've seen where they've yelled up, yelled at them before though. Yeah. Well, like, that and like the, the, uh, the guard at the tomb of the unknown soldier. Yeah. When they go around there and then like there's been hecklers and shit and they fucking generally, usually they light them up if they get, they get too fucking uppity. Yeah. yeah. Um, so one of them on there was animal urine collector, which is kind of like the animal masturbator. Yeah. But then, you know, the rest of that list, I didn't really agree with some of them. Like roofer, that's a shitty job, but it's not, it's not like a shit job. Yeah. You know what I mean? So this next list that I that I brought though was unusual jobs. Perfect. Jobs that people are like, that's a that's a fucking job. Yeah. How do I get that one? First one on the list, professional sleeper. Yeah, I feel like I've heard that before, honestly. A professional sleeper. Your job is to sleep. Yeah. And there's a couple different variations of why they require this. But a lot of testing and stuff. A lot of it has to do with testing. Yeah. And one of the primaries is hotel chains. Hotels will hire employees to stay the night at the hotels 
and test the amenities. And part of testing the amenities is sleeping in the beds to give feedback on the pillows, the mattresses that they're purchasing for the hotels before they stock the hotel full of shit mattresses. Yeah. So your job is to just go sleep. Yeah. I can see that. I, I bet can, I bet that one doesn't pay very much. I can't. There's no way it pays very good. Yeah. Hotels do need to get better fucking pillows, though. Yeah. All of them. I will yeah. say every single time the pillows are trash. Marriott's. Marriott's usually have pretty decent pillows, though. They're almost like a feather down pillow, but they're not a real feather down pillow. Yeah, I'm talking about like Motel 6. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't. I don't stay yeah. at them shit hotels, yeah. Jeremy. It's Hilton or yeah. bus for him. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> Hilton, Marriott. You know, if it's not four star or higher, I'm not staying there. I'm a bougie bitch. <laughs> you are a bougie bitch. Must be nice, <laughs> right? I know. Can't take the money with me when I'm fucking when I go, huh? Uh, I was gonna ask something or say something. I cannot right. remember what it is. Did you remember yet? No. Okay, so this next one, drying paint watcher. Mm. There is a job out there where your only obligation is to watch paint dry. And they so they use this job in certain situations where like paint manufacturers, they have individuals monitor how the paint changes color from wet to dry to make sure that it's the consistency and the colors that they want. So stupid. Yeah. Imagine having that job. It would suck. What are you doing? Watching paint dry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know that? So that uh, this is what I was going to say. And it's it's in the realm of jobs and stuff, but at the same yeah. time, it's kind of different. So do you ever watch those, like, uh, those shows like House Hunters and stuff like that? Yeah. You know what really bothers me about those shows? It'll be like a husband and wife. And be like, oh, what do you do for a living? It's like, oh, I'm a stay-at-home mom, and your husband is a, a basket weaver or something. Yeah. They're like, our budget is $2.5 million. <laughs> it's like, how? How is it $2.5 million? They leave out the trust fund. Right. Yeah. They don't talk about the trust fund. Mm-hmm. They talk about their obli- or their their daily obligations as a worker. Yeah. But they don't tell everybody that mommy and daddy got a fucking <laughs> they have a one billion dollar trust fund that <laughs> yeah. they have full access to. Yeah, they just ugh. Uh, anyway, I had to, that's was bothering bothering me. So. Dude, that that's a real thing. I think there's so you ever look at some people that you went to high school with, and you just see where they're at in life, and you go, "How the fuck? How the fuck are you where you're at, and you have what you have?" Hmm. And then, and then you kind of like put two and two together and you're like, the only way you have what you have is because mommy and daddy have to be fucking helping you still. Or you married into or it. Or mommy and daddy gave you the opportunity to just make that kind of money. Yeah. I, or you I know, married into dude, it. Dude, it happens everywhere. Happens everywhere. And I literally watched like four <laughs> flies just go <laughs> right to your yeah. fucking hand. And... <laughs> I do feel like sometimes, like, you compare yourself to, like, other people that you, you know, yeah. are from your town that you're friends with or you know or whatever. You compare, like, where you're at compared to them. But it always seems like it's unfair circumstances. And you you rate yourself lower than you should in, like, how well you're doing in life based off of where they're at and you're at. Right. But you didn't have the fucking, the, the route of travel that they did. Perfect example of this, a buddy of mine who was, he was actually a supervisor of mine when I was in the service. This dude's family owned like a fucking high dollar foreign car. What do you call it? Dealership Mm -hmm. or multiple dealerships. Super fucking loaded, right? His family had so much money. The Air Force was actually trying to get him to get out because he was like a, liability like he had too much money to be making a paycheck in the military and listening to like commands right yeah. so there was a time when they tried to get him out but i was on tdy with this guy one time and he walked up to a fucking it was like a lieutenant colonel or something we we're at the bar and they were bullshitting about like who makes more money or something 
And he looked at this lieutenant colonel and he goes, I'll bet my entire paycheck that my bank account's got more money in it than yours. And this lieutenant colonel was like, deal. Because he was like a tech sergeant at the time. Yeah. So they fucking pulled up their fucking bank on their phones and they went, yep, here you go. And that lieutenant colonel's face was like, what what the fuck? <laughs> you fucking pool shark me, you fucking cunt. <laughs> and he I don't think I don't think he made him made him pay up the, the end of the bet, but this dude had so much money. It he was driving fucking he had a BMW like sports coupe car. Yeah. That he dumped a shit ton of money in to just make it a race car. Just one of one of those guys, Idiot. you know. Anyway, so moving on. I, well, I got, actually, I think we're about out of time. I got here. sidetracked. But before we go. Hold on. You fuck. I have one more. Okay. Hurry up. I have one more. <laughs> and I found it. This is the one I, I was waiting to talk to everybody about. There is a job called an intimacy coordinator. A fluffer. No. Oh. Not a fluffer. <laughs> You could go with maybe mediator mm-hmm. if you wanted to. Their job is to coordinate the f- the facilitation of two people being intimate with each other, aka people that have never done it, people that are awkward, people that are timid, shy, and have, don't know what the fuck they're doing. Interesting. Their job is to be like a fucking therapist in the bedroom and just teach how you're supposed to do it. That do now do they do it with like two awkward people? Huh. Their job is to make sure that you and you have sex and it's a good experience while you're doing it. Interesting. So is that essentially what they did with these new Netflix series like yep. Love on the Spectrum and it, it something might, with like it, I'm well down, I'm down with it or something. I don't know. Yeah. Kind but, of. I kind mean, of. They, they set up these these so, mentally challenged I, people to go yes. on dates and then like we were watching one the other night oh it is a was, great fucking show isn't yeah, it yeah it is great I show mean, <laughs> i mean it, love on the spectrum it's funny to watch like i'm the, awkward like that with some of them <laughs> my favorite my favorite part about the entire show is how genuinely real people with autism autism or, or down, down syndrome <laughs> These people that are that are on this show are so genuinely real and honest with every fucking answer. Like there, like, there's one of them where they're like, "Are you having a good time?" And the one was like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> Just being a, like 100 percent honest. The mm-hmm. honesty in that show is amazing. But I will say, I don't. So if if the job I'm speaking of is what those people do. They don't show you the part of the job that they're referring to here, where the two individuals are actually getting ready to do the deed. Well, they and, did on this this new Down syndrome one. They like had them in counseling and talking about yeah, like yep. what what do you think yep. sex is? Yep. And like it was now really take it because yeah. I, I never I never see it in that like picture. Right. Take it, yeah. Take it to the next step though. Where they were facilitating in there. They are in the bedroom, doors locked. Like, you move your hips they're, like this. They're <laughs> naked, and there's an instructor teaching them and showing them how they need to do it. That is a job. Yeah, that's weird. Would yeah. you do that job? No. You wouldn't do that job? Nope. You'd clean up dead bodies, but you wouldn't do that job. Yep. That's that's different. The dead bodies, they're the dead, the crime scene cleanup thing could be yeah. like gross, whatever. But that's like... I don't know. You're that's intimate shit. You know. I don't know. know. Nah, no. I'm good. Could you do it? I don't think I would. Like you're not talking about going into a fucking Johnny Sin scene and instructing them. You're talking about like awkward. Yeah. Really like you walk socially awkward. You walk walk them through it. Like I no, that'd be weird. 
Yeah, because that's that more like that should be like a natural thing that happens. You know what I mean? I would totally do it. I would I totally you would. do that job. You'd probably be back there fucking crank one out as you're no, fucking open. Now you're getting weird about it. <laughs> no, you're getting weird about no, it. No, you're the getting weird about it. He says he's not great at it. Is going to be the instructor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so bad at this, but I can help you. I know what to do. I just don't practice. Smack, <laughs> smack him on the ass. Go, God, man, you're doing a great job. <laughs> Why why'd you hire me? You're doing a great job. Seconds. You're so All much right. so much better than me. Man. All right, before we go, what's your uh favorite job that you've done? My favorite job that I've done? Yeah. I have to say my favorite job that I've ever done was probably working on airplanes in the military. Mm-hmm. Hands down, it was an experience that I'll never get again, and most people will never have the opportunity to do. Yeah. Uh and it was it was great. Mm -hmm. Airplanes was mine. Airplanes. Jeremy? I'd have to say what I'm doing now, like working on wind turbines. Yeah. Just it's a it's a conversation with anybody you talk to and tell because yeah. you don't meet a lot of people that have done it before. And so you can always talk about it and they're always interested in it. So, oh, yeah. you know, I mean, I haven't done a lot of cool jobs. So, <laughs> that, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that goes into the decision, too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? Airplanes? I would say airplanes, but I definitely think uh, intimacy coordinator slash animal masturbator is probably my tops. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't no, believe I, you ever quit those. I honestly, well, sometimes I moonlight. I do it. I do it on you know intimacy like coordinator. Yeah, which I kind of consider them the same thing. You should bring me in on the next one you do because I'd be curious as to learn. You cup the, the balls. Tactics. You cup the balls and. I'll get the shaft. You just got to kind of guide it right in where it goes. That's right. Yeah. If it's bigger than mine, I'm out. Yeah. Well, it's they're all bigger than yours. <laughs> <laughs> no, airplanes for sure. Yeah. Airplanes. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Airplanes, airplanes for cool. Airplanes. All right, guys. If you have a really shitty job that you've ever done, hit us up in the comments. Tell us what that job was and why you did it for so long. I want to hear all these shitty jobs that are, that are out there that are, they're not respected. They're not thought about. They're not, you know, appreciated. Hit us up. Tell us what shitty jobs you've ever had. We'll go from there. So until next time, we'll leave you with that. Yeah. We love you guys. <laughs> love you guys. Love you guys. Till fuck then, you. fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck, fuck you. Okay, love, love you. Bye. I'm chasing my butt cheeks. Up and down the corn All these girls have cowboy boots And wear their Wrangler Never fuck me in the butthole <laughs> <laughs> uh, Take two Chasing their butt cheeks Up and down the corn All these girls have cowboy boots And carry around their pitchforks Chasing their butt cheeks Up and down the corn All these girls have real nice butts And wear those Wrangler jean shorts <laughs> Uh, pull chocks. Pull chocks!